23rd annual St. Patrick's Day celebration at the Church of St. Patrick in Shieldsville. And uh, Tim Madigan is here along with Irish harpist Richard Coleman. And uh, Tim, for those who maybe are joining us late after the break, uh, let's uh, kind of recap a little bit uh, the event coming up on Friday, March 17th. And what's all involved with the uh, event? Sure. A week from uh, today, the uh, uh, St. Pat 23rd annual uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration will be held. Uh, it starts at uh, 5.30 with the Irish uh, Mulligan Stew uh, Fest uh, at the uh, Social Hall at St. Patrick's. Uh, at 6 o'clock, there's a optional mass uh, at the St. Patrick's, uh, obviously. And at 7 o'clock, there's going to be uh, some entertainment uh, with... Uh, Richard Coleman, Irish harpist, as well as uh, a little bit of history and some Irish jokes. In fact, one of the things we're doing is inviting people to bring their Irish jokes so they can share, uh, all within good taste, of course. Ah, yeah. <laughs> remember, remember, you're in church. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not asking for limericks. <laughs> yeah, but we're not in the sanctuary. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, we're avoiding limericks uh, that night, uh, although we can share those privately later. Now, Richard, uh, what uh, got you interested in becoming a harpist? Well, I uh, retired in 2007 and moved to no 2006 and moved to Northville. Actually, retired in 2007. I've always liked the sound of the harp, and uh, I just thought I'd uh, see if I could find one and uh, try it out. And I did, and uh, started studying with Ellen Ernemisto, who teaches up in Northfield and at the colleges. And I just liked the sound of it, and. Uh, got to play in for uh, Christmas Eve and Holy Week and now I'm involved in hospice. I'm a hospice volunteer so okay. I haul my harp around. It only weighs 27 pounds. It's only 27 pounds. Well yeah, it's not a concert <laughs> harp. It's not <laughs> one you have to have a truck with. Um, so I, I just like the sound of it and find a lot of comfort in it. I was going to say there are different sizes of uh, Oh lots. Harps. Everything from little lap harps up to the big concert harps. There's all kinds of sizes. And there's a, a place over here near Red Wing uh, called Hobgoblin Music. Stony End Harps that actually makes a lot of beautiful harps. They're in a big barn. It's a folk music center, and uh, and they produce a lot of a lot of these harps. And the one I have was made there too. Among other instruments like the piano or uh, guitars, uh, yeah. on, on the difficulty scale, how hard is it to, to learn how to play a harp? Uh, well, since I'm by nature a keyboard person, I found it fairly difficult. Uh, it's harder than the guitar. I play folk guitar too. Um, Hand position is different. Uh, you got to learn a lot about the placement, and it takes a while to figure that out with the with the muscular kinesthetic memory. Yeah, it it, it took me two or three years to get under any kind of uh, credibility. I thought I didn't want to embarrass my teacher. You know. <laughs> And is it just, are you just using your fingers, or do you use like a pick or something? No, too, or? just using your fingers. Okay. Yeah. Use the first four fingers of each hand, not the little finger. Okay. Yeah. Though in Ireland they used to pick harps with fingernails and had long fingernails, and that's another technique that I'm wow. not into. There are a lot of Irish harpers, and most of them incidentally were men, not women. Most of the people we see in America playing harp are women, but there are there are male Irish harpers running around like me too. Okay, Tim, how long have you been involved in this? Oh, I would say about uh, three, four weeks. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> well, I made a mistake. Did I, you forget to show up for a meeting? And yeah, yeah I, I think so. I, I walked uh, into the office at uh, St. Patrick's after uh, Mass one day, and Tracy was there. The, uh, and I said, well, do you need any help with uh, St. Patrick's Day? And she says, yeah, Wrong we need question. somebody to chair. <laughs> I mean, yeah, foolish question. <laughs> so, uh, uh, but there's a number of volunteers uh who are uh, involved with this, uh, people preparing uh, the mulligan stew to uh, servers and <coughs> others uh, involved. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, a good group and a good tradition. And this is usually a pretty well attended event from what I... Yeah, and it's open to everyone. It's not just uh, for uh, members of uh, St. Patrick's uh, Church or Catholics. In fact, uh, this is an ecumenical event since uh, Richard's too shy, but he was a, well, tell... Well, uh, I, I'm going to crash it anyway, because I'm a Notre Dame <laughs> graduate also. You can't get more Irish than going to yeah, Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But so. he's also a retired uh, Methodist minister. Okay. So yeah, I cover is, all the fronts. Yeah. So this is open to everyone. On St. Patrick's Day, Everybody. everybody's Irish. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's right. right. The first group that uh, embraced diversity is uh, we made everybody Irish this on the 17th of March. What are some of the things that we haven't touched on yet that we should be sure and touch on? Uh, 
I think uh, is there anything else we need to cover? Uh, I mean, I'm, obviously we've got some time to fill here yet, and we're going to hear a little bit of uh, Celtic harp music too before we close things out. But uh, what is the uh, what was the reason that this whole event got started? Was it just just a I mean, because you're not really charging for the event; it's a free will offering. Um, it's just a uh, just a way for people to gather and get together. Is that? That's correct. Like any uh, uh, community event or church uh, event, it's uh, an opportunity to uh, uh, you know visit, uh, communicate, uh, as well as uh, you know enjoy the Irish tradition. Uh, the the Irish have a a great tradition of uh, embracing and enjoying life, and uh, they they enjoy a, a, a good cry followed by a, a strong laugh. And a good party. And, and a good a party, party yeah. yeah. In fact, that's why we're incorporating uh, 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 jokes into the uh, uh, thing. In fact, in some storytelling, uh, you may not uh, uh, be aware of the situation that happened here in Faribault recently that uh, uh, Father O'Brien was driving down Central Avenue and uh, uh, Sergeant Murphy from the uh, uh, Faribault Police Department pulled him over. <laughs> and uh, so the uh, <coughs> officer went up to uh, uh, Father O'Brien and said, uh, uh, Father, have, have you been drinking? And uh, Father O'Brien said, well, no, I've only had water. I've just been drinking water. And uh, Sergeant Murphy said, well, your breath smells a little bit of wine, and there's an empty wine bottle sitting on the floor <laughs> of your car. And Father O'Brien says, oh, Jesus, he did it again. He changed water into wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good story. That yeah. is a cute story. Uh, yeah. I, I was going to say, I, I, I like events that do the free will offerings because some people are sometimes maybe a little bit, uh, it's, you know, it's a little bit hard for people to give a flat rate, you know, if you charge a flat rate for an event, sometimes sure. it's hard, especially if you're bringing a family sometimes. But yet also on the other side of the coin, it seems like some people that have more sometimes tend to donate a little bit more, sure. but they don't, you know, then it doesn't have to be, you know, known that they're donating more. Right. And this... Uh, Traditionally, has not been a, a fundraiser for the church. It pretty much breaks even, so I appreciate uh, uh, what people uh, feel comfortable giving. But there's now, are all the things made by people at right, the church? Right, that's correct. It's homemade uh, stew, and uh, you know, this place must be more Irish than Northfield. They they had a St. Patrick's Day parade a couple of years ago up there, but. It, hasn't reappeared since and St. Patrick showed up. And I don't know where he went, but they marched across one of the bridges, but we haven't had it since. It must have more Irish down here. Yeah, well, I, the organizer of that uh, parade was uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Pocorny, so you can see how they're really struggling gotcha. to find yep. uh, Irishmen over there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what are some yeah. of the more popular songs that you've learned how to play on? Uh, well, on Danny Boy, for sure. Oh, you got to have that one. Yeah, i got to have that one. Uh, has Sorrow... Uh, the uh, they shaded. It's a Thomas Moore song. Uh, the, the lark is in the morning. It's more upbeat. Brian Baru's song, uh, March, actually from the 16th century. So, and then just some of the folk songs that uh, you know people know. And uh, so there's a lot of a lot of good Irish music. Thousands of tunes out there. And a lot of familiar stuff, so people can you know, sure. join in or whatever pretty yeah. easily. Yeah, we're gonna have some groups singing and. Uh, Things like uh, Tour Lura Lura or Cockles and Muscles and things like that. Yep. All right. Again, this is coming up on uh, Friday, March 17th at the Church of St. Patrick in Shieldsville. You brought along a little music uh, this morning. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about the track that we're going to Yeah, hear it's here? Uh, harp music uh, by uh, Kim Robertson, Celtic Harp. And this is uh, an arrangement of My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose. With Hitler. Same type of instrument that yep. you play. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a very beautiful piece, and uh, uh, what are the strings like? I've always wondered what a string, I've never seen a harp up close. What are the mm -hmm. strings like? Is it, is it uh, like a heavier, like a guitar string? Or yeah, it's pretty much like a guitar string. The lower strings are wound a little bit with steel, but it's very similar to guitar strings. Um, originally, way back, they were made of gut, of course, but now sure. they're, they're steel and wound, and fiberglass for the upper ones, yeah. And they're always marked with uh, blues and reds, reds for the C's, blue, blues for the F's, so you kind of have orientation on it. Is it difficult to keep in tune? 
Uh, the smaller ones aren't. I only tune mine every two or three weeks. The bigger concert ones you have to tune more frequently. There's more pressure on the strings on those and have a uh, bigger carriage stuff in the top. Yeah. Weather in different environments don't have a whole lot of effect on them? Uh, it does. I don't leave it in a car with sun or anything, you know. <laughs> right. And though it's, I've got a case to carry it with and all sure. of it can be under too severe a temperature range. Okay. Uh, again, this is uh, going to be coming up Friday, March 17th, and if you missed the part in the first segment, uh, we did say that uh, Archbishop Hebda has granted special dispensation, so it'll be okay to go and have some mulligan stew and enjoy the event. Well, John, uh, <clears throat> I don't know if you heard uh, the other news in town uh, recently that uh, a gentleman by the uh, name of uh, uh, Riley uh, Welsh uh, was uh, <clears throat> recently arrested for uh, uh, robbing the state bank. Uh, really? <clears throat> yeah, it, uh, it was really a serious situation. And uh, he was put on trial at uh, the Rice County Courthouse. And uh, uh, Judge uh, Wolf was uh, pres presiding, and uh, <laughs> so they went through a long trial, and uh, the jury came back and uh, found uh, Riley uh, innocent. And there was great uh, jubilation in the uh, uh, courtroom, and uh, uh, Riley hugged his attorney, and then he turned to Judge Wolf and said, "Now, can I keep the money?" <laughs> <laughs> And there's going to be a lot of that going on uh, at this event as well. Some Irish jokes and uh, a little bit of Irish history. And and uh, what what do you know about the history of St. Patrick, Tim? Any, uh, do you know much? Well, you know, it's it's sad to report that he was actually an Englishman who uh, was uh, captured as a slave, yep. as a young, teenager. Yep. Yep, yeah, yeah, as a young man, and uh, brought to Ireland and uh, basically. Uh, uh, was a sheep herder uh, as a slave in Ireland. Uh, he was able to uh, uh, escape back to uh, England and then uh, uh, entered the uh, the priesthood and went back to Ireland and... Uh, he uh, didn't drive the snakes out of Ireland, incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you know, mythology has to be an important part uh, of Unless it. there were snakes or Englishmen, probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, that might be, uh, but... Uh, yeah, actually the uh, conversion of Ireland to Christianity uh, was, they referred to it as a green conversion because there, mm -hmm. were, there were no uh, martyrs uh, uh, of uh, the uh, missionaries and there was no forced uh, conversion. So it was uh, 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 an area, in fact, if you, uh, if you look at the uh, uh, Irish cross or the Celtic cross, uh, uh, Richard likes to say Celtic. It's uh, Celtic. It's, but it, mm -hmm. that's why it has a C uh, in front of it. But anyhow. Um, oh boy, we can debate that probably. Yeah, well, for you, know, you, you can't uh, talk about the <laughs> Irish for very long without an argument breaking out about that's something true. or another. But the, uh, uh, the cross is uh, the uh, standard cross, but also has a circle. An orb, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. which uh, comes from the uh, uh, pre Christian. Uh, area of uh, Ireland and the, the represents the sun and so forth. So there, St. Patrick uh, was quite astute at uh, marketing and understanding. He was very good. He, he's one of the three great Irish saints. Uh, Columba is the other one and then Bridget, St. Bridget. So it's equal time to the women in the three. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Patrick, Columba, and Bridget are the three great saints commemorated in Ireland, among many others. And St. Bridget has her own cross. Yes, she does. It's slightly so. different. Yep. Palm, uh, palm leaf cross, her day is February 1st, um, the official day of the Celtic spring when it starts with the lambing. It's a little, uh, spring is a little later in Minnesota, but you know, if you keep the Celtic here, that's when spring begins. And it's interesting that uh, us Americans have either gone to a mulligan stew on St. Patrick's Day or corned beef and yeah. cabbage, whereas actually I was reading somewhere in, I in Ireland, it's like lamb and bacon are the traditional. Mm -hmm. Well, foods for yeah, the day. corned beef and cabbage is uh, kind of an Irish American uh, dish, actually, because yeah. the uh, Irish, of course, when they came to America, were quite poor, and mm -hmm. uh, so they would uh, go to the Jewish delicatessens in the big cities, and mm -hmm. they would get the uh, cheapest uh, uh, cuts of meat they could, and uh, uh, and then made it from there. So they uh, it was uh, turning uh, uh, a 
a problem into an opportunity. Kind of like Ludafisk in a way. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you know, there Tim, you I, I like what an Irish cabbie told me, though. We are over there, and we were getting into the cabbie. He said, you know, if all the Irish had been dispersed all over the world, came back and got on the island of Ireland, it would sink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there are millions. Uh, yeah. When I was, I've been to Ireland three times, and <clears throat> I went back to the area where uh, the Madigan family uh, ah. came from, mm -hmm. and it was interesting to find that a lot of people from that area uh, uh, immigrated to Australia. Mm -hmm. And the, <clears throat> when the Great Famine occurred in Ireland in uh, 1845, uh, a lot of people left. In fact, a million people out of a population of uh, five history. or six yeah. million left, and about a million starved to death. <coughs> but the, uh, the English uh, were in control of Ireland at the time, and the local English landlord uh, uh, paid people to immigrate to uh, get them out of the uh, country because of the uh, the famine. So about half went to the United States and half went to uh, Australia. Yeah, and Tim, one of my ancestors named O'Sullivan had to leave uh, under the reign of Queen Elizabeth I back in the 1600s or he would have been hung. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I go way back. My grandma was an O'Sullivan, mm -hmm. so, you know, can't get back that far easily. My daughter-in-law spent, uh, I think it was a year or two over in Ireland going to school and, ah. and, and the, spending time with the culture and everything, and she just loves it. She, she, she says she can't wait to get an opportunity to go back and spend some time. They're wonderful so, people, very so, hospitable. Yeah. Uh, again, our uh, celebration coming up, St. Patrick's Day, Friday, March 17th, from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m., and then, uh, Tim, why don't you just run down the rest of the schedule. There's going to be a Mass and... Right, the, uh, the Irish Mulligan Stew uh, starts at uh, 5.30 at the Social Hall in St. Patrick's and goes to uh, 7.30, Mass at 6, which is optional. Uh, the stew will be served through uh, uh, Mass in a different part of the church, obviously. Uh, and then 7, uh, we'll have uh, entertainment. And that'll probably go till probably 8, depending on uh, how many jokes and songs right. uh, we're singing. So there'll be... Uh, There'll be sing-alongs, very sharp music, uh, a little history, a little, a few jokes, and so forth. So, and it's open to uh, uh, everyone, uh, and uh, we'll welcome uh, on St. Patrick's Day. Everybody is Irish. All right, and hopefully it'll be uh, great weather, and hopefully you get a good turnout for the event. Richard, anything else from you? Richard Coleman uh, going to be playing the harp, and uh, no, it's it? just a good time. People like harp music. Uh, I'll intersperse it with some singing. I'll do four or five numbers at least, and uh, I think it'll be a, a, a rich evening for sure. Yeah, it'll be relaxing. People enjoy it. And uh, now I know it's the. Church of St. Patrick, their pastor has been having some health issues, so yeah. they've got just uh, some other priests helping out. But right, Father Victor has been uh, ill and uh, uh, won't be able to, but Father George will be there to uh, uh, perform the Mass and okay. so forth. So. All right, we hope everybody gets over there. Again, it's a free will offering uh, for that event, <coughs> and all the great uh, food, the, the stew, the coleslaw, Irish soda bread. I've never had that. I've got to have that. Oh, yeah. oh, I make it every year. It's great stuff. Easy to make. It doesn't rise. It's easy to make. Okay, yeah. and uh, lots of other good things to go along with it. So we hope everybody gets over there to the Church of St. Pa Patrick in Shieldville on Friday, March 17th. Tim Madigan, uh, Richard Coleman, thanks for coming in. Thank You're you, welcome. John. Have a great day, everybody.